the next form of quadratic function that we're going to learn how to graph is what is called vertex form. And a quadratic function is in vertex form when it looks like this. f of x equals a times the quantity x minus h squared plus k, or y equals a x minus h squared plus k, where the point h comma k is the vertex. Notice this number that's the vertex for the x coordinate of the vertex is the opposite of the number that's inside of the parentheses here. And the y coordinate of the vertex is the same as the number that's being added outside there. Like our other forms, the a gives us our scaling factor. It tells us how steep or how wide the parabola is. And once I know where the vertex is, from our, just like our previous forms, I'm going to go over 1, up a, over 2, up or down 4a. And that's going to give us our other points to graph this. So the easiest way to see where this is happening is for me to graph several quadratics so you can see what all these shifts are doing. Okay. So if you remember, our generic quadratic is y equals x squared. That's our parent function. And the five points that we use to graph that parent function are negative 2, 0, 1, and 2 where 0 was the vertex. So I'm going to put a 0 in here. 0 squared is 0. 1 squared is 1. 2 squared is 4. Negative 1 squared is 1. And negative 2 squared is 4. So my parent function, which is the generic parabola, is 0, 0, 1, 1, 2, 4. And then it would go 3, 9, 4, 16, 5, 25. I'm just going to graph the five basic points so we can see what's going to happen here. Okay, On the piece of paper I gave you to take home for these notes, this graph is already provided for you. The next one that I'm going to graph so we can see what's happening here, the A is going to be 1 and the k is going to be 0, and we're just going to have what's inside the parentheses here. Now, what I want you to realize, that this is also in vertex form. I can write this as y equals 1 x minus 0 squared plus 0, where 0, 0 is my vertex, and there's my scaling factor. Okay. Next one is y equals x minus 3 squared. Okay, if it's in this form, the five points that are really nice to put in here are whatever makes what's inside the parentheses, negative 2, negative 1, 0, 1, and 2. The easy way to come up with those five points is just to figure out what makes what's in the parentheses 0. So what number so what minus 3 is 0? That would be 3. Okay, so 3 minus 3 is 0. 0 squared is 0. Okay, and then what I'm going to do is I'm going to add 1 to get 4, add another 1 to get 5, subtract 1 to get 2, subtract another 1 to get 1. Then I can put these numbers in here. Remember, I'm symmetric about this line. It's my line of symmetry, goes for the vertex. So these numbers are going to match, and these numbers are going to match. So I'm just going to do these two so I can end up with not dealing with double negative with negatives. So 4 minus 3 is 1. 1 squared is 1. 5 minus 3 is 2. 2 squared is 4. And using symmetry, those are the points I get. So I have 3, 0, 4, 1, 5, 4. 2, 1, 1, 4. So
So if you look at the purple graph, all it is is the black graph shifted to the right three. The number inside the parentheses is telling us how far we are shifting, left or right. Okay, And it's in the opposite direction that you would expect. If it's inside the parentheses, it's in the opposite direction. So I subtracted three. So usually subtracting would be to the left, but the opposite would mean go to the right. So this says shift to the right three. Next one I'm going to do is x plus 3 squared. Okay, x, y. What number do I have to put in here to make it a 0? That would be negative 3. Negative 3 plus 3 is 0. 0 squared is 0. Remember, this is a line of symmetry. I'm now going to add 1, which would be make it negative 2. Add another 1, negative 1. Go the other direction, negative 4, negative 5. Put the negative 2 in here. 3 minus 2 is 1, 1 squared is 1. 3 minus 1 is 2, 2 squared is 4. Using symmetry, I get those two points. So I have negative 3, 0, negative 2, 1, negative 1, 4, negative 4, 1, and negative 5, 4. So here, again, this is inside the parentheses, so it causes my graph to shift three units in the opposite direction of plus. The opposite direction of plus is to the left, so this graph is just the regular parabola shifted three units to the left. Next one I'm going to graph is x squared. That's not going to be dark enough for you guys to see, so I will change colors. y equals x squared plus 3. This is the same as y equals x plus 0 squared plus 3. Okay, what I'm going to do is make my table. What makes x 0? Just 0. What makes what's inside the parentheses 0? Just the 0. There's my line of symmetry. Okay, 0 squared is 0. Plus 3 is 3. Then I'm going to put the next number to the right, which would be 1, and then 2, and then negative 1, negative 2. Put a 1 in here. 1 squared is 1, plus 3 is 4. 2 squared is 4, plus 3 is 7. Using symmetry, 4 and 7. So I have 0, 3, 1, 4, 2, 7. Negative 1, 4. Negative 2, 7. So if I add numbers outside the parentheses, it moves my graph up. The red graph is just the black graph moved up 3. And if I add numbers outside, um, subtract numbers, it's going to move my graph down. Okay, I am not going to put data points in here. What I'm going to do is I'm going to show you how I expect you to be able to come up with this without having to put these points in. So I'm going to write y equals x squared minus 3, which I need you to realize is x minus 0 squared minus 3. So my vertex is at 0 opposite of that number, the same as that number. So that's what I want you to do. So I want you to directly read it and tell me where the vertex is. So my vertex is at 0, negative 3. The number in front of the parentheses is a 1. It's invisible, but it's it still takes into play. So I'm going to go over 1, up A, which is 1. So I go over 1, up 1 in both directions. Then I go over 2, up 4 times this number. 
So up four would be at one. And then I have my graph. Oops, that should have been, I didn't go over another digit here. So over two, I'd be here. Over two, up a total of four. So that pink graph is x squared minus 3. It's the black graph shifted down 3. Okay, so I've shown you what to do if they're individually inside the parentheses that I'm adding or subtracting, individually outside the parentheses that I'm adding or subtracting. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you examples where I do all of that. Something inside, something outside, and maybe possibly something multiplying on the outside. So, let's erase it, and then I'm going to do separate graphs for each of these next ones. On each of these separate graphs, the first thing I'm going to graph is the y equals x squared. The paper that I give you for graphing quadratics always is going to have, or in most cases, is going to have the y equals x squared graph there with it, so that um, you have something to compare it to. Because as you get farther along, I really... I'm not going to be as concerned about the graph, but you able to tell me what its graph looks like compared to the parent function. Like it's shifted two units to the left, three units up, and it's skinnier, or it's steeper, or it's wider. Those types of things are going to be what I'm concerned about. First one, y equals 2, x plus 1 squared minus 3. So 0, 0, 1, 1. So this is just the y equals x squared, 2, 4. So this is the y equals x squared graph. That's my generic. Then what I'm going to do is graph the one from the equation. The vertex is at the opposite of the number in the parentheses the same as the number added or subtracted outside the parentheses. So my vertex is at negative 1, negative 3. Then I'm going to go over 1, up 2. So I'm going to go over 1, up 2. Over 1 in the other direction, up 2. Ugh. Then I'm going to go over 2, up 4 times 2, which is 8. That's a total of 8, so that would take me to 5. Okay, if you do not remember the over 1, up A, or over 2, up 4 times A, once you know where your vertex is... My vertex is at negative 1, comma, negative 3. We're always going to put the vertex in our graph. Then I'm going to go 1 to the right, 0. 1 more to the right, which is 1. 1 to the left, which is negative 2. Another to the left, which is negative 3. Remember that my graph is symmetrical about here. So let's put this number into the equation and follow the order of operations. 0 plus 1 is 1. 1 squared is 1. 1 times 2 is 2. 2 minus 3 is negative 1. Now put a 1 in here. 1 plus 1 is 2. 2 squared is 4. 4 times 2 is 8. 8 minus 3 is 5. I do not necessarily need to see this table. Um, I do need to see the points on the graph to make sure they're accurate. But if you remember the shortcut, over 1, up 1, times a and over 2 up 4 times a, that's all I really need to see is those points that are on the graph. And our last example, y equals negative 2 x minus 1 squared minus 5. One, two, three, four, five. 
One, two, three, four, five. So, generic parabola. Okay, what I need to do is I need to find out where the vertex is. The vertex is at the opposite of the number being added or subtracted inside the parentheses. The opposite of negative 1 is 1. The same as the number outside of the parentheses, negative 5. So my vertex is at 1, negative 5. Now I'm going to go over 1, down 2. Over 1, down 2. So that would be at negative 7. I'm going to go over 2, down a total of 4 times negative 2, which would be negative 8. So I'm going to go down 8 from the negative 5, which would be negative 13. And there would be the graph. Again, if you're not comfortable just doing it by looking at it, we know I'm at 1, negative 5, and that is my vertex. So add 1, add another 1, subtract 1, subtract another 1. Put this 2 in here. 2 minus 1 is 1. 1 squared is 1. Times negative 2 is negative 2. Negative 2 minus 5 is negative 7. Using symmetry, I've got the other negative 7. Put a 3 in. 3 minus 1 is 2, 2 squared is 4, times negative 2 is negative 8, minus 5 is negative 13, and using symmetry. So that's how you graph them if they're in the vertex form. Personally, the easiest form for something to be in to graph is the vertex form. Okay. Um, I may ask you what the equation for the line of symmetry is. And the equation for the line of symmetry is just x equals whatever the x-coordinate of your vertex is. So that one would be 9 minus 1. Here, the equation of the line of symmetry is x equals 1. So those are the basic points for graphing quadratic functions in vertex form. If you've watched the video solving by taking square roots, um, there are problems that look like they're that's what we're calling the vertex form. If you're solving, you can solve these taking square roots, which will also tell you where your x-intercepts are. So that would give you some other points. Okay, I'm going to solve this one by taking square roots and this one by taking square roots. And so we can find the exact values of our x-intercepts, which could give me more points. So to find an x-intercept, you make your y zero. So I'm going to bring this over here. I'm going to write 2 times x plus 1 squared minus 3, and I want to know when that is 0. So I'm going to add 3 to both sides. So I get 2 times x plus 1 squared equals 3. Divide both sides by 2. x plus 1 squared equals 3 halves. Then I'm going to take the square roots of both sides. That gives me x plus 1 equals the square root of 3 over the square root of 2, and don't forget the plus or minus. Then I'm going to subtract 1 from both sides, and I get x equals negative 1 plus or minus the square root of 3 over the square root of 2. <coughs> when we talked about radicals, I can't have a radical in the denominator. We learned how to get rid of it by multiplying the top and bottom, the numerator and denominator, by whatever radicals in the denominator. So my final answer would be x equals negative 1 plus or minus the square root of 6 over 2. This is the exact answers. You get negative 1 plus or minus the square root of 6 over 2 and negative 1, I mean negative 1 plus the square root of 6 over 2 and negative 1 minus the square root of 6 over 2. So in earlier videos, I told you that um, we would use a negative b over 2a to find the equation of the line of symmetry. 
this is the negative b over 2a right here. That's the line of symmetry. And then I go from the line of symmetry, the same distance, positive and negative from it, to find my two intercepts. So that was the first example, solving by taking square roots. What I want to show you is the second example, solving by taking square roots, um, and show you why. If we look at the blue graph, I should get nothing here. I'm going to show you how you can tell you're going to get nothing here and show you when you can stop. Because there are no roots. Roots are where they cross the x-axis. They're solutions. They're my x-intercepts. So I want to set this equal to 0. Negative 2 times x minus 1 squared minus 5 equals 0. Add 5. x minus 1 squared equals 5. I forgot the negative 2 out here. Now divide by negative 2. x minus 1 squared equals negative 5 halves. My next step would be to take the square roots. And I get x minus 1 equals plus or minus the square root of negative 5 halves. For those of you that have learned about complex numbers uh, and imaginary numbers, you know taking the square root of a negative number gives me an imaginary number. Imaginary numbers do not cross our x-axis. So these are imaginary. You can stop right here and write down no solutions. And it's actually no real solutions. This is a graph of the real numbers. We get no real solutions. So having it in vertex form, really easy to graph it. If I ask you also to give me the x-intercepts, you're going to solve it by taking square roots, which is a video you should um, have already watched or it will be the next one in your playlist.